Okay, this is the uh, Prusa i3. Uh, this is uh, putting a lot of the submodules together and uh, some uh, little touches, and I'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff here. Um, I've assembled the Y axis onto the main frame. Um, see how I do that there? Just this just lays down in there. Um, make make it so that the platform clears on both sides. Uh, I just bump it up against the back. This is not per the official design, but uh, with it as far as this way as it'll go, um, we're still wasting a lot of space here. And I think I'm probably actually going to wind up having to. Uh, unscrew this platform and move it in the positive direction a little bit in order to uh, maximize the build area. I haven't put all the screws in here yet but I will do that after I get everything done. Uh, one thing that I do need to do is um, I haven't done yet is that this uh, the y-axis needs to be made perpendicular to the x-axis. I haven't checked it yet uh, very precisely. I just sort of eyeballed it. Um, you can, uh, there's no real adjustment down here, uh, by moving, because this screw is, or this bolt is not is just going to be butted up against that, but you can, and again, you probably want to, uh, not have this one screwed down yet. I probably was a little premature on that. Just screw down these two here, and, uh, can it, you can rack this thing back and forth by, uh, moving these nuts a little bit and making the whole thing rack one way or the other. Um, okay, so the I have the uh, extruder onto the x-axis, a little spacer in there. I've got the fan mounted here. Um, the heater resistor here, if you're using the resistor instead of the uh, cartridge heater. It goes through here. Um, I clamp this with a uh, barrel connector rather than soldering it because uh, I I don't know how people get soldered. Whenever I solder that, as soon as the minute I turn it on, the solder just melts and the wires fall off. Um, so I'm not sure what's the deal there with some people being able to use solder there. Uh, I've, I've always just clamped these. Uh, I, I use a pair of vice grips and I just squeeze the hell out of the thing. Um, the thermistor is in the little hole there and goes up here. I've got the, uh, and then the wire goes up to the top. 12 volt power for the fan, uh, wires for the motor, wires for the thermistor and the heater. They're all bundled together and they go up over the top. I, I'll wrap this with something to make it neat later. And I've got the uh, them all tied together onto this uh, little wire guide here to uh, uh, help things uh, just be neat and to concentrate the strain here instead of yanking on the components. Um, I've added the x-axis uh, end stop switch here, which is I'm using a, a compact end stop switch so that'll that's not really critical at all. You just slide it around to wherever you need it to be to get this where you want it. Um, I've put another wire guide here. I'll tie this onto there eventually. Uh, let's see. I've just electrical taped this wire. Getting the wires neat can take a while. Deciding where you're going to run the wire. Um, I kind of just make it up as I go along. Um, I've got an end stop here. This is a, uh, um, a Hall Effect end stop. Uh, this little clip here I just shoved in there to keep the, the magnet was... Uh, the magnet is just glued on there. I just uh, put the Hall Effect sensor in there and go uh, make a little sharpie mark up here where the magnet needs to go to be directly over the top of that. Um, you do want to power this thing up. Don't put the magnet on until you're ready to power up the electronics because the magnet has to be uh, the right pole towards it. If you put like, if it's, uh, 
if you have the wrong pole down it won't ever trigger so you need to uh, move the magnet up to the sensor see if it triggers if not flip it over move it up again and then mark it so you remember which side's which and then glue it into this place where the, you made the little mark there um, okay coming around the back here um, I've got a 12 volt 10 amp power supply I'm bolting it here got the uh, uh, power going up there's a fuse in there uh, on this particular thing there's uh, the, the power goes through the fuse and then up into the switch um, there's three wires on the switch just because the switch is lighted um, that's pretty straightforward to wire AC into here 12 volts DC out of there and over to the electronics um, this particular printer happens to be using uh, Sanguina Lulu uh, electronics um, just because I had them sitting around and this is a printer that I'm building to donate to the school and I'm getting out of the business of using the Sanguina Lulu because uh, the ramps has gotten so cheap that it's it's there's hardly any price difference that worth bothering with uh, Sanguina Lulu used to be significantly 50 bucks cheaper um, not really the case anymore um, so this is my last one I'm getting rid of it um, nothing wrong with it it just won't run multiple extruders and uh, it's a little jumping through hoops to compile the firmware if you want the LCD panel and stuff but that's that's neither here nor there um, anyway um, this is the heater input if I was using a heated print bed it would plug in here um, thermistor for the for the hot end this would be where the thermistor for the uh, for the uh, hot end or heated print bed would go uh, I've got my three end stops I've got um, XYZ and extruder um, stepper motor driving uh, you see the Z has two connectors here so you've got two Z motors uh, these are just auxiliary uh, 12 volt outputs uh, so I'm running the fan into here uh, be careful to on the polarity with the fan uh, most uh, these are little CPU fans if you hook them up backwards they will just instantly fry and you'll be buying a new fan um, so get your voltmeter check that before you plug it in um, and that's really kind of it. Uh, then we need to go into uh, calibration, uh, getting the firmware compiled properly uh, so that the motors run in the right direction and the end stops work properly and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll uh, do a little bit of cleanup.